Robert, what a great pleasure to meet you. My pleasure, Ed, thank you for coming. Sure, uh, so talking more about Arliss, do you feel that you, if you were to continue that show today, what would, what would he be up to? What would he be doing today? Um, well, um, I, I don't think much would change. Maybe he'd be part of a bigger firm. That would, I mean, of course, all these conglomerates buy up or everything. To me, it was always just a guy doing a job. I mean, he had a very, he was a guy who had a business doing a job. He had a very unique clientele. Like I said, I come from a family business. So I knew how business worked as far as what decisions are going to be made. And it's, I it, know it wasn't PC. Uh, it was like everybody would, when we read the writer's room, they'd say, oh, can he do this? And I go, no, because that's not real. Uh, I'll give you an example. We did a show about a scab ball player when they, when they had the replacement ball players. So, and this one guy was a replacement ball player, like Kevin Millar was. I don't know if you know baseball, but uh, Kevin Millar was a replacement player. And what happened was Arliss, who represented big athletes, represented a lot of the leaders of the Players Association you know, like a Roger Clemens or like, you know, the big stars. And they were very, very anti, you know, anti scam So in the story, Arliss is saved. His car catches on fire and he's locked inside and he's saved by a scab ball player, by a replacement player. And I, I go to thank him and I said, what can I do for you? He goes, well, I'd like you to represent me. And of course... I had Arliss had to deal with that. And everybody in, in the a room would always say, Oh, you got to represent him. And I said, Absolutely not. He would lose all his, he'd lose his clientele. That's not, that's Hollywood. That's not real in business. He would lose his ball players. And now what he does do is he gets him an agent, which turned out to be Shelly Berman in a very funny episode. <laughs> but there's no way that's not real. That's Hollywood bullshit. He, he's not going to lose his entire practice and his biggest clients to represent a guy making no money because it's, it feels good in his heart. Not going to happen. So, I mean, I was proud of that. And so, you know, I knew, you know, I knew about running a business. To me, it was a guy doing a job. You know, it sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of you in the character. How much of the character is actually a part, an extension of you at this point? Oh, I would say, well, I mean, when it came to that, like I said, um, like I said, he was running a business. And, and so that part of it is me. I mean, the heart part is also me, yeah, hopefully. Um, I mean, quite a bit. But Arliss, more than anything else, I did for sure. Well, I created it. Yeah. So that was the story. And it was, it was easy. And we dealt with character. And um, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, quite a bit of that. It was funny. I would always go to uh, one time. I was at the uh, Tribeca Film Festival uh, Vanity Fair opening party and Fran Leibowitz came up to me, chain smoked and said, I hate sports, but I love your show. And I, and I told her it's not about sports. It's about characters in the world of sports. And that's totally different. That's totally different. It's not about a big game. I don't give a shit about a big game. As Ron Shelton used to say, there are no big games. That's what it was. The problem with most sports, if we're talking about sports, most sports movies and stories is they're always told from the point of view of the fan. And the fan only gives a shit about one thing. Did the team win or lose? The good sports projects aren't told from the point of view of the fan. They're told from the point of view of the guy who is in the arena in some way. And he's not thinking, uh, you know, about what, I, what he's thinking is I'm trying to keep my job. And that's what I, you know, would, would lean to.